So good evening to all of you and welcome to the University of Mary Washington. We're really happy to have you as admitted students and guests joining us. Um, we are in the meeting module of Zoom and this session is being recorded. So if you do not want to be seen or heard, um, please turn off your video and mute your microphone and you can answer questions at the end of the session. I'll talk about that. Um, and you can also put questions in the chat box too. I'm Emil Lester. I've been teaching in the Political Science and International Affairs Department for the last 15 years. Um, I'm the author of three books. I teach courses in political thought, American politics, and politics of religion. I've also been involved and politically active in the debate over public school curriculum. So I've worked, for instance, with a civil liberties organization in Texas to protest social study standards that discriminate on the basis of race or religion. I've testified several times before the Texas State Board of Education. I'm currently involved in a research project um, about a required Chicago public school curriculum about the past use of torture by the Chicago Police Department and how this affects students' views about police. So this is my introduction. Um, I, how this is going to go is I'm going to introduce you to the department um, for a little bit and I have a uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, to accompany that. And then we are joined today by one of the really truly excellent students in the Political Science and International Affairs Department, Sally Berkeley. So after I talk, Sally's gonna talk about her experience and then we will open the floor for questions. Um, so I'm just gonna take a moment to share my screen with you folks. Okay. All right, um, so the first big question, of course, is why study political science at University of Mary Washington? What is special about us, the department and the university? And there are three things on this page. Um, so I'll start with the first one. Pi Sigma Alpha is the National Honor Society. It's sort of the Phi Beta Kappa, but for political science. There are 800 chapters in colleges around the country. Our department, students in our department have won nine separate national awards for excellence in student research. This means that our students have won more awards than students at any other college over the last 30 years. That includes Ivy League colleges like Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. Um, our students have won more awards than students in any of those departments for Pi Sigma Alpha. And I think this is a result of our small class sizes, the really excellent ratio of faculty to students that we have, the fact that we have dedicated teachers, and really most of all, the fact that we have wonderful students. Um, the second point here concerns our faculty. I'm gonna actually introduce the faculty members in a little bit, so I'm gonna skip over that just for now. And the third point has to do with our physical location. Um, what Something that's really special about uh, Mary Washington, and particularly the Political Science and International Affairs Department, is that we are 50 miles in either direction from Washington DC and Richmond. And this creates a lot of opportunities for students for internships. Um, so you'll find a lot of students in the department, for instance, stacking their classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we have a Virginia Railway Express station that's very close to campus. You can hop on a train if you have no classes on Wednesday and Friday, go up to an internship in DC, come back at the end of the day and the rest of the week you'll be working on your regular student work. So you can really, you know, explore a range of opportunities this way. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the different options within the political science and international affairs department, political science. So you have the option of majoring in either political science or international affairs. Um, each of these majors really strives to provide a comprehensive coverage of knowledge in the discipline and prepares you not only for understanding political science or international affairs, um, but for success after you graduate. Two additional notes, which I want to talk about quickly. Um, we also have a program that's interdisciplinary in international affairs. So let's say you really want to study, you have a passion about studying in the Middle East. Um, we have courses about the Middle East in the political science and international affairs department, but we do not at the university have a full major in Middle East studies. Um, what you could do with the international affairs major is you could, for instance, take a language study um, and have that count towards your major. You could take a history of the Arab world course and have that count towards your major, um, along with uh, the political science courses that we do offer in the Middle East. We also offer a minor program in security and conflict studies. And this is particularly useful for those of you folks who are thinking about trying to get involved in the public sector in careers in national security. So we've had students work at the CIA, after they graduate at the CIA. 
at the Defense Department, in various intelligence agencies at the National Geospatial Agency. Many students also use their skills and knowledge to work for, um, to work in the for-profit government contracting sector um, in the DC area. Um, you, as you guys may know, in fact, some of your parents may work in these sorts of jobs. Um, there are a lot of these types of for-profit government contracting jobs and they often pay quite well. Um, so I just want to really take a moment to, you know, connect this screen with what we were talking about, what I was talking about previously, um, and sort of all the different good things that are connected that the department offers and how these opportunities overlap with each other. We have, let's say, you know, we have a student who takes a security minor um, over the summer or during the semester, they're able to do internships with federal government agencies deal dealing with security. Because of these connections, they're able to um, make excellent contacts, which put them in a good position to get jobs after graduation. I think this is a sort of interaction which is distinctive to Mary Washington's Political Science and International Affairs Department uh, because we're so close to Washington, D.C. In other words, if you go to UMW, because we're so close to Washington, D.C., um, you have a leg up over other students from other universities who don't have these opportunities. Okay. Um, I want to briefly introduce you to all of our faculty, to fa all the faculty members in our department. Um, before I do that, though, I just want to take a moment to talk about what makes our faculty special. Um, first of all, I think we have faculty that are really committed to making themselves available to students and working with students, as opposed to, say, um, a large state university where you have huge classes, not only intro classes, but even upper level classes. At Mary Washington, you really get to know your professors and your professors get to, to know you. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but this really facilitates working on various types of research projects. Um, on a related note, we have a department that really places an emphasis on developing student writing. Um, so for instance, in my classes, and this includes even my um, lower level introduction classes, we only have essay examinations, no multiple choice examinations. Um, and so, as I said, you know, I, I do this even in my um, 101, 102 lower level courses with a decent number of students, and it gets really busy, you know, to uh, grade essays and grade papers at the end of the semester, but I'm really happy to do it because of how this helps students develop their writing. And my colleagues as well place just as much, if not more, emphasis on writing ability. Um, they use multiple choice exams only sparingly. And the goal of this writing, you know, these writing assignments is really to encourage your critical thinking, to get you folks to see different points of view. And ultimately, this is really helpful in getting a job. Um, so my wife, for instance, runs a fairly successful small business government contracting agency in the Northern Virginia area. And she is constantly interviewing and reviewing resumes from students who have just graduated college. And one of the things she's always talking about is the number of students who can write well, who can speak well, is really in short supply. And so I think that what we do at Mary Washington really prepares you to fill this gap. And it also gives you an advantage you know, in the job market. Um, our chair in the department is Dr. Elizabeth Laris. She studies East Asia, China, and Taiwan especially. Uh, she recently had a Fulbright scholarship, which is really impressive and pretty rare. Um, she's studying right now the intersection of what's called the Belt and Road Initiative, which is where China is looking at trying to build alliances in places like Africa and Eastern Europe to build a more international presence. Okay, I'm going to go in sort of alphabetical order of our departmental members now. Um, Dr. Rosalind Cooperman uh, teaches about Congress. She also has experience working as a legislative aide in Congress, and this will sort of be a theme. We have um, professors who have a lot of real world experience prior to and you know, during the time that they teach. Um, she also focuses on women in politics. So she's currently working on a research project, for instance, which deals with issues surrounding protecting reproductive rights during COVID. That's just an example of the type of um, uh, research uh, opportunities that our faculty present to students. She also teaches about the Supreme Court and the judicial system. Dr. Jason Davidson focuses on American foreign security policy. Um, he's really the go-to person to talk about when it comes to questions about the national securities studies minor. Dr. Stephen Farnsworth focuses on American politics, the presidency, and the media. He was a newspaper journalist before becoming an academic. He is also the director of the University Center for Leadership and Media Studies. So Dr. Farnsworth is very often in the news. 
you might have seen him quoted in the Washington Post. He appears in articles quite frequently, appearing on national public radio on various programs, talking about both state and national politics. The Center for Leadership that he runs, runs polls among other things, which very often make headlines um, in national newspapers. The center always has a number of research positions available, and Dr. Farnsworth has worked with these research assistants to publish academic articles, to publish op-eds with students, which appear in major newspapers, and I think Sally can talk a little bit more about some of these opportunities in a little bit. Dr. Shurupa Gupta is director of the Women and Gender Studies Program, as well as a professor in the political science department. Um, she's really interested in international political economy and the politics of globalization. Her expertise area, area of expertise is South Asia, especially India. Um, and since we're talking about international economics and development, I just want to take a moment to talk about the fact that not only University of Mary Washington in general, but particularly the political science and international affairs department, we've had a good number of students who have been placed in the Peace Corps and accepted in the Peace Corps. Um, this is not only a great thing to do for the world, um, a great thing to do for America, um, but it is also extremely professional, professionally useful. People who go into the Peace Corps come out and they have a lot of opportunities waiting for them. Um, we have grads, and so, and I'll talk more about this, about how our alumni help our current students, um, but we have graduates from the Peace Corps who can and have guided current students through the admission process, giving them advice, giving them a leg up um, over students from some other universities where you don't have graduates from um, who have participated in the Peace Corps. Okay. Um, I've already talked about myself, so I'll go on to Dr. Ranjit Singh, uh, who focuses on politics in the Middle East. Um, Dr. Singh is another one of our faculty members who has real world experience. Um, before he came to teach and in the political science department, he worked for the National Democratic Institute in international development, and he worked for a, a year in Egypt. The newest member of our department is Dr. Melissa Martinez, and she is very focused on issues of human rights and she focuses particularly on human rights in Latin America. So her research, for instance, examines the challenges that some of the newly democratizing nations of Latin America are working through. All right, so, wow. Um, you know, I, I, I apologize for the awful uh, color coordination in my outfit there. Um, I, I don't know how my wife let me walk out of the house like that. Um, but nevertheless, it, just the, the slide, uh, forget about this picture, the slide. Um, I, I just want to sort of recap here. In the Political Science and International Affairs Department in Mary Washington, we do not use teaching assistants. I attended George Washington University as an undergraduate, which is a fine institution. I think I got an excellent education. Um, but many of my intro classes had teaching assistants. Even some of the upper level classes, uh, there were teaching assistants. When I did my graduate work at University of Virginia, I was in, in political science department there. I was a teaching assistant. Now, I think I did a pretty good job. I won an award you know, for being a teaching assistant, but to be perfectly honest with you, a connection with a teaching assistant doesn't do much for you as opposed to with a faculty member. Teaching assistants, for instance, don't do independent research projects with students. So when you have no teaching assistants like, the, like our department, um, you are communicating directly with professors in every single one of your classes. The professors get to know you early in your major, your first or second year. Um, I, I didn't get to know many of my professors until I was in my third or fourth year um, of undergraduate. And I think that's a real advantage of our department. Um, so we, we talked about some of the in-class opportunities. What I wanna talk about for the next couple of slides is some of the out-of-class opportunities. The university, as you can see from this slide, offers a really wide diversity of internships. Um, so we've already talked about uh, internships with security agencies, um, students do internships with all sorts of federal government organizations, think tanks in the Washington DC area. There are uh, internships for state government in Richmond, which is close. We have a good number of students who you know, are interested in law school and end up interested in going to law school, becoming lawyers, um, end up in great law schools. Um, they do um, internships in law firms in the area. 
Um, we have a lot of internships, as you might expect. Uh, you, a lot of students do internships with political offices. So I actually had a senior a couple of years ago who, while he was a senior in the political science department of Mary Washington, ran the campaign for state delegate for Joshua Cole. Um, and when Joshua Cole pulled off this amazing upset victory, um, this student ended up as his senior advisor. Um, so, you know, we have students who are actually running political campaigns while they're students. Um, I think one of the really special things about Mary Watson in our department is we have alumni who look out. We have students who look out for each other, and then we have graduates and alumni who look out for current students. So, for instance, we just recently had an alumni career panel where five alumni came back and they offered their tips about internships, about jobs, about interviews. We have one of those every year. Um, we have a University of Mary Washington political science and international affairs page on Facebook with over 200 current students and alumni. Maybe Sally can talk a little bit more about that. Um, we have a LinkedIn page. Um, and to, just to sort of sum this up, because we are a smaller, really collegial department, what that means is that your professors come to know you while you're a current student and very often maintain contact with you after you graduate. And the, the, the contacts that professors and faculty members have with graduates can really help current students. So for instance, um, last semester, I had a student who was interested in working or, or an interning um, in the FBI. And I was able to um, connect that student with two people, two you know, graduates, alumni who are currently working in the FBI. If I have a student who's applying to University of Richmond Law School, for instance, I can reach out to a couple of our alumni and I have reached out to a couple of our alumni who have attended University of Richmond Law School and various other great law programs or like William and Mary and put students in touch um, with current students in touch with these alumni. Okay. Um, the other projects that we have or the other sort of out of class opportunities that we have concern research projects. And there are two types of research project. One is undergraduate research. We call them at Mary Washington U-RES, U-R-E-S projects. Um, these are projects where a faculty member is doing research or writing a book. This is really a great resume builder. So I'll just share my own experience on this a little bit. Um, I received a substantial fellowship a number of years ago to study an initiative to teach about religion in public schools in the state of Georgia. Um, over the three years I studied this program, I had 10 students help me on different parts of this project. They dealt with such issues as religion and race, religion and sexuality. Um, I currently have a student who is helping me out on the study of Chicago curriculum on police torture as well. Students who do these projects will very often present papers at academic conferences, looks great on a resume, um, will co-write articles with faculty members, have co-written articles with faculty members, and again, we have these opportunities because we have faculty members who not only do interesting research, but do research on what's actually happening in the world around them, both in the United States and in American politics, and also in various places around the world. And we really want to work with undergraduate students on these projects. That's not the case at a lot of other universities where, for instance, there are graduate programs where the professors will prefer to work with graduate students or maybe just not work at all with their students. Um, I, I know personally with my projects, I know other faculty members, when we have students work on these projects, we really give them a lot of responsibility. And I can say that I've learned a tremendous amount um, from the students that I have worked with. It's less of a sort of um, uh, teacher, you know, it's, it's less of a situation where um, I'm just conveying my knowledge to students and it's more of a collaboration between a uh, professor, faculty member and student. Independent study or honors thesis program projects are projects where students decide what they wanna write, which is a really cool change up because usually you're in classes where it's a professor deciding that this is what you wanna read or this is what you wanna write. Um, honors projects, independent studies projects, or you decide what you're passionate about. You decide what you want to read about you know, for, for a semester or two semesters. 
Honors projects are for students with sufficiently high GPAs in the major and overall. So what you do is you write a thesis and you also participate in an oral defense, which I think is with, with faculty members, which I think is a great experience. If you pass, you graduate with honors in the major and your thesis goes in the University of Mary Washington Library for the rest of eternity. Um, you know, so that's you know, one way you know, one, that, that you can be famous. Um, we've had students work on a wide range of projects. Uh, I talked about this project on COVID and reproductive health. I'm doing honors thesis project this semester on felony disenfranchisement, um, a project on the effect of attending college on Jewish students' views about Israel. So just really wide range of topics. And one other thing which I want to mention here at, at Mary Washington is that Mary Washington offers um, a significant funding sometimes um, to students for their research projects. Um, so over the last couple of semesters, I've had my students get anywhere between 250 to 500 dollars from the dean's office in supplementary funding, and students will use this for travel. Um, you know, and hopefully, you know, post COVID, uh, we're going to go back to traveling for research, either in the United States or internationally. Travel to conferences, um, the purchase of books, things like this. Um, last February, right before COVID hit, we had six students presenting their research at the National Research Conference in Washington, D.C., and that made us one of the top five universities in terms of the number of students who qualified to present at this really selective conference. So again, this just goes to show the quality of the activities that we um, involve students in in our department. Um, so if I, just to sort of summarize before we move on to, to the next slide, the department really offers not only great in-class opportunities, but a wide range of out-of-class opportunities. And these are all things that help you build your resume. I mean, you, you, you folks have had the experience of applying to colleges and you know that, you know, the colleges get a stack of applications and then they look for, you know, what are some of the special things about each of these applications that makes them different or better than the other ones? And it works the same way if you're applying to law school, if you're applying to graduate school, if you're applying for jobs when you graduate. It's not only the class, um, you know, your GPA, which is really going to show what a great student you are, what, what a great you know, candidate you are, um, but it's also taking advantage of these out of class opportunities. So it's really great that you folks have taken the initiative to be here today for this admitted student celebration. And you should definitely consider, you know, following down this path of taking advantage of these sorts of opportunities. Okay. Um, just a slide about our student groups um, and, and campus groups. We have a number of student organizations and clubs that have a political orientation. We have college Democrats, we have young Republicans, we have a student government association, we have an international relations organization at a model UN, we have a pre-law society. Uh, at the University of Mary Washington, we have a weekly student, really excellent weekly student newspaper. So I currently have a student, for instance, who covered the Black Lives Matter protests um, in Fredericksburg last summer and, and wrote some really fascinating articles uh, about that. Um, so we have students, again, because we are in the Washington, D.C. area, we have students who are really not only involved in classes and extracurricular projects, um, but really civically active as well. It's, I, I think compared to many, many other universities, um, we have students who are particularly active um, in, in actual politics, which is, of course, what political and international political science and international player students are studying. So they not only study it, but then they apply what they're doing in the real world while they're college students. Um, we have a study abroad program. Okay, and this program allows uh, students to study at educational institutions across the world for a summer, a semester, or a year. Um, Sally has done one of those, and so she can talk about that in a little bit. Okay, and then I'm just gonna post these. We had one, one of the students who is in this session asked a really wonderful and really important question about, you know, well, what are the real life opportunities um, that uh, Mary Washington political science students have both in internships and also after they've graduated? You know, sort of a question of, you know, what, what can, um, you know, a political science and international affairs degree at University of Mary Washington do for you? And, and this is, Fantastic question. I mean, this is a question you should be asking. You should be, you know, holding our feet to the fire. And so I want what I want to give you in the slides, I'm just going to post them and go through them and talk a little bit over them, is just give you a brief overview of some of our distinguished alumni. 
Um, so we have, sorry, uh, we, we have really distinguished diplomats. We, we have people who go on to successful careers in security agencies. We have people who go on to successful careers in the federal government and also state government or local government. We have successful people working in congressional offices. We have successful people working in the for-profit sector. Um, we have successful people who are lawyers. Let me just flip through this. Um, and we also have successful graduate students you know, who go on to teach in academia themselves. So our department has sent, has sent students off or had students accepted in graduate programs at places like Johns Hopkins, um, which has a fantastic uh, foreign affairs program, Princeton, University of Virginia, um, in fact, one of our recent graduates um, who went to University of Virginia for his graduate degree recently got a tenure track position at Colby College, which is one of the best undergraduate institutions in the country. All right, so I'm just going to briefly post this. Okay, um, to, just so you can take a look to, to add on to this about some of the careers that, that our students have been involved in. Um, and of course, you can always learn more about our department on the website. Um, I'm going to let you take a look at this for a second, and then I'm going to take it off so that Sally can start speaking. All right. Okay, so hi, I'm Sally. I'm a junior at Mary Washington, and I'm a political science and communications double major with a minor in computer science. I'm also part of the honors program, uh, the UMW varsity swim team. I'm a member of pre-law club, the president of the student conduct review board. Um, yesterday or Wednesday, I was elected co-president of Pi Sigma Alpha, and I'm involved in many other things on campus. I could keep going, but <laughs> I'll stop there. Um, I've also studied abroad in France, and. I always like to say one of my the main things I chose when I came when I chose Mary Washington was the size, which is interesting because when I first was looking at schools, I was looking at all the big schools. I wanted to go to UVA, George Washington, JMU, the bigger, I wanted a big classroom. But then I realized that by going to a big school, I wasn't going to get the same connection that I have with professors and with other people around me. So when I came to Mary Washington, I stepped on the campus, it felt like a community. And especially within the political science department, I have had so many professors who they take a personal interest in it growing your skills rather than just coming to class, turning in the paper, getting a grade and then turning another paper in, you get your feedback. You can go to office hours and talk about it or right after class and talk about it. And you go more in depth to get better rather than just to go through the assignments. Um, even more so in class with how class is formatted. It's not a lecture format. It is discussion most of the time. So you get asked questions about the reading by your classmates or by the professor and you all talk about what you think about it because one of the main things I've had also when I'm doing internship interviews is they commend me for my ability to convey information rather than just repeat it or oh I read this and that's it. You have to be able to understand and persuade people in a different way or explain it in a different way so that everyone can understand it. And that's what I've really gotten out of my experience here at Mary Washington is you know how to talk, which is so such a weird statement, but it's really true that you learn how to talk about really hard topics and convey how you feel about them without going into your opinion and focusing more on the facts. So that's a little bit about me and my experience, but I can definitely also answer any questions. I've done a lot of different things on campus, so a wide range of questions is fine. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sally. And um, yeah, it's uh, Sally, your, your parents must be really disappointed. I mean, what, what, what's your GPA, if you, if you don't mind asking? I have a 4.0. Yeah, for, yeah, right, and, and you know, right, and, and uh, yeah, they, they must be really disappointed in all the tremendous activities that you're doing and the varied activities you're doing too. Yeah, great. So thank you so much. Um, so what we are going to open the floor for your questions right now. Um, we are happy to answer, uh, or at least try to answer what, whatever you guys um, have questions about, either material that we went over, um, or you know, questions that we did not cover. 
We'll also watch the chat. If um, people are not comfortable saying it, they can always type it also. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah, we can do that. Obviously. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, I know it's always hard to go first. Um, and that, that's why, like Sally was saying, the chat is a good option. Sally, but while, while people are, are thinking of questions to ask, um, can you talk a little bit more about your study abroad experience? Go into a little bit more detail, it'd be great. Um, yeah, so I study abroad. Oh wait, this is a question. Where about can this take you abroad? Um, well, so for study abroad, you can go a lot of different areas. A lot of people choose to go based on what their um, language is going to be for their uh, general general education requirement or the international affairs requirement can be fulfilled with uh, study abroad depending on the amount of classes you take. Um, I went to Aix-en-Provence, so southern France, and I took French while I was there with uh, the Institute for American Universities, and I got to stay with a host family, so they spoke no English. It was just just French the whole time. <laughs> and that was really challenging, but also very eye-opening because I got to see exactly what the culture was like. I got immersed in the language. I developed very quickly because I had to. And then I really enjoyed also the fact that I could travel around. So I got to see a lot of France and um, some people went to Spain as well, since it's Southern France. And you just get an experience that you could never have like in the US just reading a textbook, you just get that firsthand experience of what, what it's like to be in another country. Right. Um, yeah, excited. Please, please go on. Yeah. Uh, so what are some common double majors with poli sci? Oh, I, I just wanted to quickly add on, on the um, study abroad question. We have a, Sally talked about the UNW in France program. Um, we have a UNW in Spain program. Uh, we, we have a connection particularly to Bilbao, Spain. Um, and so you can go on the University of Mary Washington website and there is a list of the study abroad programs that Mary Washington has some sort of connection with where our students have studied previously or in the recent past. Yeah. And there's also some study abroad programs, I believe on the UNW political science website uh, that have political science geared courses you can take um, if you're interested in doing that mm -hmm. instead of doing like a language focus or you could do both at the same time. Yeah, so Sally, do you, do you want to take the, the common double majors? I have some thoughts, but you, you, you want to talk about it, so yeah. Yeah, um, I've known a lot of political science double majors with geography, communications, there's some history, and then also psychology is very common. I'm not quite sure. I, I think you kind of go in hand, but um, mm -hmm. I think the nice thing about political science is that Politics is in everything, no matter what you're doing. I mean, when I'm, I'm taking computer science also, there's still politics in that because there's uh, there's information technology laws, there's patents, and there's always that element. So whatever you want to do, you can make it work together. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think particularly we, we have a, a really good number of students, significant number of students in international affairs who do um, double majors and, and Sally mentioned some of them, uh, geography, history, um, very often in languages as well, um, which can be really helpful if you want to work, let's say, for the State Department down the road, or you want to work for a security agency or, or the CIA. Um, you know, double majoring in a language would, would be really helpful. Um, some of the double majors, which we'll see in, on the political science side, uh, we, we have some students, you know, do, who do double majors in sociology, some students who do, do double majors in philosophy. And, and maybe so I can talk a little bit about this, but we also have students who essentially make their own major. Um, I have a student, for instance, I, I forgot the exact title of her major, but um, it, it's in social justice. And so she takes, she mixes courses in the local science department, in the philosophy department, in psychology department, um, in really interesting ways. Yeah, so I, I have not met too many people who have made their own major, but I know two. Um, one was psycholinguistics, which she mixed psych with linguistics classes. Um, which is 
not really political science, but it's a, another you can make your own major. Um, and one that I learned of recently is actually my my landlord went to Mary Washington and she made her own pre-law major. So she took um, philosophy classes that were focused on ethics, business classes focused on commercial law, political science classes with the judiciary. Um, I'm not sure there is a pre-law track within Mary Washington now, she was here in the 70s, so it's a little different, but that's still another possibility. You could do a major that's really focused in ethics and specifically in legal processes. Yeah, so, so that, that actually, um, Sally, that's a great point because it segues to the next chess question, which we have in the chat, um, which is, do people, do, do a lot of people that graduate political science degrees have further ambitions in law school? Absolutely. Um, you know, in, in fact, um, in the career and alumni panel, which we just had, we had two lawyers come back and talk about their experience. Uh, we had one person talk about uh, their experience at Villanova Law School, um, the other student graduate from University of Richmond. Um, we've had students who have attended Duke University Law School, you know, which is obviously fantastic. College, we, we currently have a student graduate last year who got accepted to College of William Mary Law School. Uh, we had a student a couple of years ago at New York University Law School. Um, and these are students who not only get accepted into law school, but they get money to go to law school, which is a really valuable and pretty rare thing because as you folks may know, um, law school debts, um, if you, you don't get funding, um, can be can sometimes you know be pretty heavy when people graduate. So you know for us to have a track record not only sending people to really excellent law schools, but getting them to these law schools where they have funding, um, I, I, I think is a feather in our cap. Um, as, as Sally said, um, doc, we have a pre-law uh, concentration at Mary Washington now. Dr. Cooperman does our pre-law advising in the political science department, and she's somebody who has a lot of experience working um, with, with law students. Um, we have a pre-law society at the university. We also have a mock trial team at the society at, at, at the university as well, um, you know, which does a great job of preparing students both for law school and also for success after they graduate from law school. Yeah, so, so these are really great questions. Um, does anybody have additional questions, either if they want to put them in the chat or talk to us on screen? Yeah, I mean, what, one thing which I wanted to, which I did not talk about earlier, if you guys are, are maybe thinking of additional questions, but I wanted to note is in addition, you know, an, an additional opportunity uh, because we are in the Washington DC area is that we are able to invite and draw in a lot of truly excellent speakers um, from, from the DC area. So for instance, last year, I think we had the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Um, which is a really important and meaningful position, um, come to speak to students in Mary Washington. Um, I've had Melissa Rogers, who was the White House, uh, the chairperson of the White House Office on Faith-Based Partnerships, um, both in the Obama administration, she just got reappointed in the Biden administration. Um, I, I've had the uh, head of Americans United for Separation of Church and State. I've had the executive director of One Virginia 2021, which deals with gerrymandering issues come down and talk to my um, students. Um, in recent years, we had Congressman Rob Whitman come to talk to students. We had Senator Mark Warner come and talk to students. And very often when these folks come down, um, they not only come down to speak, but they have lunch or they have dinner with a select number of students, which is a really wonderful networking opportunity. Um, they serve as resources. I've seen this happen um, for students who are interested in internships, students who are interested in help with their research projects and sort of setting up connections. Um, you know, so this is another, I think, pretty distinctive thing that we um, in the political science department of Mary Washington offer. Great. Do we have any more questions? Um, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so, so, so maybe not my color coordination is really cool. I mean, it's, it's not good sometimes, but uh, thanks for, yeah. Um, oh, Jose, do you, do you have anything that you wanted to add to what we talked about? Um, not particularly. Uh, this is, you know, if we don't have any further questions, now it's a great stopping point. Um, if I could get, uh, 
If I could get both of you to drop like your email addresses in the chat, just in case the students have any follow-up questions, that would be awesome. And then uh, we can go ahead and sign off for the evening. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us and for coming and asking the questions that you asked. Uh, we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your Friday evening to hang out with us. So uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I'll drop my email in the chat as well, and we can uh, kind of go from there. So, so thank you so much, Jose, and, and thank you so much, Sally. Just, just two really quick things. I'll, I'll put this page up one more time. Um, so I, I, I put my email in the chat, and uh, you can definitely go out and, and you know, please feel free to contact me. Um, and you can go to the website. And the, the last thing is, I, I really would be remiss, and I, I'm not saying this in a joking way. Um, R.I.P. Um, rest in peace, D.M.X. Um, a true legend, um, and this was, you know, sad news today. So, um, but but thank you guys so much for you know being here. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Jose, for, for hosting us too. No problem. Okay, cool. Thank you guys.